Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I'm a serious strategy gamer and we are returning to our command let's play of the US against Iran in the Persian Gulf. Now I had to take a couple of days in between episodes to process how things go on in, in real life and honestly um, it, I, I just had to do some soul searching here because it just feels weird to play this as there is you know as these countries are actually at the brink of war. Of course we started this way before um, all of this escalated so quickly um, and I, ju I just didn't know whether it felt right to continue to do this because on, on the one hand what we're doing here is entertainment and it just feels wrong to do entertainment if there's if there's actual people shooting but on the other hand and this is why I am continuing today is I, I firmly believe that games like these and simulation games in particular can tell us something about the world and and just explain to us better how these conflicts would potentially play out and and therefore I think we can learn something from this and, and maybe see the developments in real life a little bit better and this is why I want to continue this and want to show just how things could escalate if they would escalate so in that sense I think this is a very good scenario here Black Tiger 4 uh, the th first three of course we played already on this channel um, the fourth one is you can see it's much more difficult it's much more complex than the ones before um, and that is primarily due be due to the fact that we are changing sides here. We are going to play as Iran today. Um, and the backdrop is, of course, if you haven't watched the other ones, that there's a little bit of skirmishes uh, going on in the first three between Iran and, and the US, as the US does have a carrier group in the Persian Gulf. And that is now withdrawing to the US and it's passing by the Strait of Hormuz. So uh, let's load the scenario. Let's talk about what we've got over here. And um, I'm going to just... Do pause this, I'm not going to read through all of this. Uh, the basic fact is Iran is um, using some Russian equipment, so they are slightly better equipped than in real life, but only slightly so, um, and going to try to attack, do an all-out attack on the American ships in transit in the Strait of Hormuz, uh, which will be supported by carrier jets uh, operating from Bahrain. So, let's enter this scenario and see what is going to happen over here. Of course, we are going to load this up and just wait a second. So the green, uh, blue units, of course, are ours. Oh, and this is not the view I want. I do not want, want the Sentinel-2 map. I do just want the BMG layer. Yeah, that looks better. Right, so the blue units here are ours. The yellow units are units that we haven't identified, but it's fair to assume that these guys over here, with the lots and lots of radar missions, these are the American ships. We can immediately mark them as potentially hostile. Um, not quite full-blown enemy uh, units yet, but it's relatively sure that these guys are hostile. The Iranian approach would consist in real life probably of three things. The most important one is land-based anti-ship missiles. So we've got a couple of units over here. You can see all of these launches. And they are packing missiles. These missiles are basically something like a cruise missile. Um, they are, they do have a range of about 70 miles. Um, the hit probability is not that great um, and they have a weight of about 700 kilos. So they are not that expensive. They are relatively inexpensive. They do have a small uh, radar up here in the nose to find enemy um, ships. And basically you launch these things um, and we can probably see the range so this is the 70 mile range you can see that easily easily covers the Strait of Hormuz the shortest um, or the smallest part here uh, of the Persian Gulf in its entirety you can also see we have a couple of missiles with further range the dark red circle over here is our maximum range so yeah it's it's relatively easy to cover a large area now of course the Americans do have defenses against that in particular rim missiles, so missiles that you launch at other missiles and short range guns like 20mm guns, um, Gatling guns uh, that do try to shoot down these missiles as they come in. But you can see even this one battery over here has about what like 60 missiles that it could fire at these ships. And we have further ones, we have another one over here, we have another one over here and so on and so forth. There are a couple of ones uh, there are also a couple of sand batteries. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell the difference here. Uh, but these sand batteries are just anti-air, so surface-to-air missile batteries um, that are there to fire at the enemy. 
We also have the SSC-1, which is, I think, slightly different. I think this is a more ballistic missile, and you can see it has a much, much higher range over here. So, yeah, this is the primary attack vector for Iran to engage any shipping. Basically, missiles being fired from Iran onto the sea against these ships. The secondary approach is small boats. So, specifically over here, you can see uh, we've got, we can switch to unit view instead of group view. You can see a couple of boats over here. Many of them are just really these, either these uh, Bavar 2s, which are ground effect, uh, quote unquote, boats. So they are a little bit like jets, but they can only fly very, very low over the water. Um, interesting vessels, nevertheless, um, but they're not really that well armed. But some of these guys, like this one here, I can see it's, it's again a very cheap approach. You have this basically a yacht, uh, a yacht, um, carrying two missiles, so it's it's not a big thing, uh, but again, it does have the capability to sink a ship potentially with these guys. Just how big is that missile? Can we actually check that? Should be able to. So yeah, you can see it's not a very technically sophisticated thing, although of course it does carry a radar. Now, it does have a range of only 20 miles, um, but it is still 250 kilos, so still not, not nothing to be completely shrugged at. And of course, the third vector of attack uh, that the Iranians have are, is their air force. Of course, this is much, much worse than anything the Americans have, uh, but while well, the Americans here would be operating from a carrier, and uh, we know that they have a Nimitz class carrier down here, um, well, they can only base so many aircraft on a Nimitz class area, aircraft carrier, and whether or not you do get basing rights in any particular conflict in Dubai, in Bahrain, um, that's a little bit open for discussion in this scenario. And the Americans do have basing rights in Bahrain. Now, on the other hand, the Iranian Air Force does have a couple of um, airfields. Most importantly, Bandar Abbas, which is over here. Uh, you can see we've got 36 aircraft over here, mostly old American stuff, the Phantom, a couple of um, uh, Russian aircraft, the Su-33, which is fairly modern actually, and the MiG-29, which is slightly less modern, but um, still a formidable aircraft in its own. We've also got Bandar Bus, another airport over here with 46 aircraft, a couple of MiGs. And these AA missiles are just anti-air missiles, so there's a lot of them. We also got a couple of Krypton-equipped uh, Krypton Su-34s, so ground attack aircraft, also Russian-made, two engines, you can see that back there. Fairly modern aircraft, actually, 2015, um, so version, so that's nice. Um, and the Krypton over here is an interesting one because it's an anti-radiation missile. So um, this is pretty good. It should be a little bit faster than the normal cruise missile. Yeah, 2,000 knots. That's that's pretty fast. And that is going to be one of our key assets over here. We also got the King Bold, which is a standoff uh, missile. I think it's TV guided. You can see the sort of TV thing over there. It's fairly large, 760 kilos, but relatively slow, range isn't great. They, these guys might be great for follow-up strike, but not maybe for the main strike. Looking further, we also got a, um, another aircraft down, uh, another airport over here with 19 aircraft. These are mostly, no, exclusively, these attack aircraft, Tigers F-5Fs, uh, carrying just 3-4 bombs, general purpose bombs. Um, nothing to be particularly excited about, but we will talk about these in a second. Over here in Quiche, we also got a couple of F5 Tigers, a couple of Tomcats even, uh, which is extremely interesting, and a couple of MiG-29s. Most of these guys are carrying some form of AA. No, all of them are carrying some form of AA, um, including the Ihawk, which is does have a fairly decent range, 15 miles over here. This is a little bit more than most of the American missiles, actually. And the Phoenix Fakur 90 modification uh, with a range of 100 miles. So that's pretty significant. And lastly, we do have some airports over here, deep, deep, deep in Iran. Um, we've got the international airport over here. We can see, you can see all of the uh, sub makeup of that, um, which does include a couple of um, A50Us, which is just, um, yeah, you can see it's a big radar dish carrying Russian aircraft. So. Um, decent one, not the most modern, but still extremely useful, especially for Iran, because these guys will be extremely useful in the target acquisition. So these guys, the job of these guys is to spot enemy shipping, uh, and then we are going to send our missiles that way. And you know what? We can immediately send 
uh, one of you into the air and that should be okay um, we do have a six hour mission timer here so I think that's perfectly fine and we've got this secondary airbase over here with another 34 aircraft phantoms tomcats a lot of them dump bombers over here a couple of sidewinders all of that um, it's not that important I would say but you know what let's um, actually do start these guys here as a group and then these guys here as a group as well um, so that we have some AA cover these guys will take some time uh, to come into action now I've already uh, set up a couple of uh, missions over here but not too much so our main job is to attack these five ships uh, we know that there's one American carrier, Niemann's class carrier. We know that there are two destroyers and two cruisers. We know that because it's well in the mission briefing and it was in the previous missions where we played as the Americans. These ships are going to try and get over here and, and come across uh, the Strait of Hormuz over here. Our job is to attack them. Now um, we can actually go ahead and just get one blimp over here and we should get a lot more updates on the positioning of, of guys. Yeah, and you can see most of these guys are going into that direction. Um, can I actually mark you guys as neutral because I don't know, or at least as unknown? Because I think you guys here are actually the radar emitting ones. I don't know what you are. Will you be re re revisited? Yes. Okay, so we don't know what exactly that is. We don't know what exactly this is. Uh, but definitely there are some sort of ships around. There are also a couple of neutral ships, of course, fishing vessels and all of that uh, in the vicinity. Now, the most direct approach would be just firing all of our missiles at these guys right away. Um, and that might be the most straightforward thing to do. But I think we could go slightly differently. And I'm looking at this airport over here and I'm seeing 19 freefall bombers. So these guys are not that great. Um, they're in fact very, very inaccurate sort of aircraft, a uh, very light aircraft. But you know what? What we could do is just take four of these aircraft, launch them as a group, and we are going to send them closer uh, to the air group. And what we're going to do strategically is send this single bomber squadron over the aircraft carrier, over this group, try to get in one bombing run and then launch all of our missiles. And the basic reason for that is we don't know whether the Americans uh, do consider us as enemies yet. We did have in the previous episodes, we did see um, that the Americans, that the uh, Iranian aircrafts were operating extremely closely um, to the American air group and they were basically getting them used to being even over the aircraft carrier and, and items like that. So just four aircraft passing by wouldn't be an extraordinary event for them. So um, I think we're going to try to do that. We also have another group over here. And you know what? I think I want to park these a little bit closer to our air defenses because definitely the Americans are going to do something in return against us. So right, yeah. We're going to send these guys up down here. We are going to also uh, set up a couple of our aircraft over here. So um, let's get let's get Banda our bus over here. Um, not so much the Phantoms. I didn't even know we had Phantoms over here. Um, but more importantly, um, these flankers. What's your range? I don't think it's that great. 45 miles. It's not too bad. How about you? 70 miles. So that's much better. And we've got these MiG-29s. Yeah, you have a much shorter range though. So let's actually get a couple of these guys here into the air. I'm going to launch them in packs of four because we are individually much uh, much inferior, of course, to the Americans. So yeah, let's try to set these guys up. Let's also launch a couple of uh, aircraft over here, mostly with higher range, sort of, just to, just to be aware of what we could do. Maybe these SC-34s. Oh, definitely the Kryptons, I think, would be a very nice follow-up attack uh, to maybe be able uh, to disable their radar installations. If we could do that, that would be great. Um, I would very, very much love to see that. Then we've got more MiG-29s, MiG-29s. You're all sort of the LMO A-10, semi-active. You know what, let's launch another... Yeah, well, let's launch another group over here. I don't want to launch too much because that would 
of course sort of give away our presence uh, to the Americans or our intentions even so let's make sure that we're not doing too much of that uh, but I think you are alright. Do we have anything else over here in Bandar Boss? I don't think so. This SC is 30, 33s. No, you're fine, I think. Let's launch you. Um, and then down here in Kish Airport, I think I would like to launch at least the Tomcats. What's, oh, AA-13. I don't know these. Are you a short range missile? No, 160 miles. You're amazing. Okay, we're definitely going to launch you. And that should be fine. And then you guys here will be launched as well. And we launch you once we have attacked. Because we don't want to arise uh, too many suspicions over here. So uh, let's start the game and see what these guys are going to do. So we are getting more information about these guys down here. We think they are down here. That does make sense. These might be the Marines that have already transited uh, the Strait of Hormuz, whereas this here uh, must be the main carrier group. So we can count five ships in total, if I'm not seeing that wrongly. We don't know which one is the carrier. Potentially would be in the middle, I would expect. But yeah, we could also go ahead and I think we do have a mine layer over here. Um, you know what? Let's, let's try to do that anyway. I don't think it's going to be hugely relevant. Let's define an area over here. Let's add a new mission. Um, it's going to be the mission, it's simply going to be mining, uh, and it's going to be of a class mining. That should pretty much um, make that clear. We are going to say that the delay for arming the mines is only going to be 15 minutes, which is extremely short, of course, uh, but I think it's well worthwhile. So let's send you down here, and um, let's make sure that you're going as fast as possible, and we're going to assign you to mining. Right. I don't think it's going to be uh, possible to do too much over here, but you know what, let's try. Uh, maybe we will be lucky. I'm more more thinking that we have got probably going to lose this ship. How many how many guys have you on? 30. How many mines have you got? Well, a number. So, 60, mile, 60 months, that's not to be um, shrugged at at all. Right, um, let's also look at our surface-to-surface -surface, uh, batteries over here. A couple of these guys are carrying the SSC-1, which is an interesting layout. Do we have anything over here? No, this is just um, basically local AA, the SU-23. So, just guns, basically. Over here, only guns to be expected. Over here, only guns to be expected. Yeah, of course, we do have a couple of radar installations. I'm guessing you're operating. Yes, you are, so that's nice to see. We do have fairly accurate information on these guys down here, which is mostly due to the fact uh, that we have one of these aircrafts already in the air, and that should be nice to see. We've also got you over here. You're not doing anything in terms of sensors, so that's okay. I'm going to unassign you from your mission because I do not, not want you to be there. Now... You are flying over here, and um, I would actually like it to be a little bit more, let's say, in between the operational areas. We know that they are operating from Bahrain. Uh, let's try to get them closer towards over here. I don't want to stay close to the coast. And you know what? These sounds are a little bit too, too loud, I think. And unfortunately, there's simply no way to, to turn these uh, lower, so I'm thinking I'm just going to do this. Um, okay, this is just mainstay number one. So one of these guys, uh, you are already on a mission. So let's select this flight over here, Tomcats, you're going to get over there. Then we've got another flight over here, another group of Tomcats. Um, that's fine, basically I think all of you guys should be coming down here. And you know what, I'm going to rename these guys here to Tomcats, uh, long range, because these are the Phoenix number one just so that I have some reference about who these guys are. Uh, you're going to get down there and uh, you're going to be named Tomcats medium range number one. So you guys are all going to come down there, that's lovely to see. Then we've got these guys over here, these F4s. Um, let's get you to come up. I don't think there's any way how we could sort of mask our approach with the terrain. 
uh, that we've got. So basically, honestly, let's just come in here and try to come up via this um, via this island, sort of hoping that it will mask our radar signature at least a little bit. Right, and we already know that there is that this guy is hostile. Do we know anything about it? Yes. So we know that this is the carrier. This is our primary target for the mission. So let's do keep that in mind uh, and see whether we can do anything about that. Could of course wait a little while until they are really over here, but let's see whether that is really going to work out too well. Uh, we've also got, of course. So firstly, let's uh, rename you guys here, Bombers. Bombs number one. Um, let's also check on these guys very briefly. Okay, so firstly, I think I would like you to be on minimum altitude so that you're not giving away your position too easily. And then your primary weapon are, of course, these bombs. So what do we know about these bombs? Can I please get the info? We know that they have a minimum launch altitude of 1,000 feet. Um, so in fact, at least, at least, Let's get this over here and then over here. At least over here, I think I would like you to be on minimum uh, on a min on a low altitude of 1,000 feet. And up until that point, you want to be probably a little bit lower. Um, you have a little bit of a problem just keeping your guys together. So for the moment, I'm going to go to a little bit lower speed here so that these guys here can catch up and all of them are information and that would be lovely. Right, up over here, uh, we've got a couple of flights so you guys um, are the anti-radar unit and um, I would principally this is the range you need to come a little bit closer um, so let's bring you up over here I think that would be fine so that we can dive behind this mountain after we've engaged I think that'd be lovely and then we've got a couple of further units we've got flight this one over here these flankers you can see they have a very decent anti-air range. So um, let's bring you up over here. Uh, you're the SU-33 anti-air long range. And then what else have we got over here? There was another flight. Ah, uh, basically the same. Okay, um, SU-33 long range AA long range number two. It's fine. We've forgotten you know denominate that on the first one. Uh, you're going to come to the left and I think that's going to be fine. There's another flight over here with basically the MiG-29s in an anti-air loadout. And you're basically long range as well. Okay, That's fine. Um, let's bring you here over these marsh, this marsh terrain. And honestly I think you guys can also go on a lower altitude. Of course that's going to burn more fuel. Um, so it's generally not advisable, but it does mask a radar signature a little bit. Um, and I think that is crucial over here. Um, you guys, are you actually on weapons tight? Because I don't want you to launch right away. Um, I think I can set that up. Amcon settings, and then to general, you're, you're tight. Fire only at contacts. Okay, let's put you on hold so that you're not firing at all unless I explicitly tell you to. And that should be okay. So you guys have nicely formed up, that's okay. Uh, let's then go to cruise speed so that we are a little bit fast over here. Um, and I'm guessing that up over here at the very latest, uh, we probably want to be on military speed. Should be okay. Do we have any... No, there's no no limit to the launch speed uh, that we could do over here. We do see a couple of aircraft, but as um, actual events have shown, it's sometimes very hard to say what is an aircraft and, and what not. Okay, also we've got a couple of flights over here. So you are what? You're the MiG-35. You have an extremely good range. You have fantastic aircraft. That's really, really nice. Okay, and um, let's call you um, MiG-35 Super Long Range. That's fine. That's the AF-13 over here. What is your... Oh, also, pause. 
I do not want you to shoot. Can I actually set that up for the entire mission? I, I tend to not do that for the entire mission, but I do think there's a potential how you could do that for the entire group. Now that's just for for this particular group, but I would like to set the... It's not... Come on. I would like to tell all my units Can I not do, do that for the entire site? Uh, I guess not. Okay, fine. So, let's pick you. Um, let's tell you to be on rules of engagement against air contacts. You're going to be on hold. Did I not click that? Hold, please. Yes, that's okay. Good. Um, and I think you can be right over here. I don't I don't mind you being over here. That does sound, sound perfectly reasonable to me. Then we've got these guys, um, you're the Tomcats, you should also be likewise um, on a hold firing pattern over here. To have a decent range, you could engage some of these guys. These are F-15s. Oh, look at these guys, all of them launching over there. So let's actually try to get you up over there, just to see what else we've got down here. And I think that's fine. And also, of course, rename you. So you're going to be Tomcat. And what are you actually packing? Phoenix. So that's long range, uh, I think, number two. Right. That's fine. Any other any other group that we have over here? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, fine. Right. So let's get back to running the game, actually, over here. You are on a low altitude, that's fine. Um, let's actually get you to be on minimum altitude and maybe terrain following. Uh, by the way, notice that there is some light cloud cover, so that is something that to, we need to be aware of. And yeah, you can see basically these guys don't have a fabulous range. It's actually fairly limited. Um, and I'm not sure I like your formation. You're a little bit spread out there, but honestly that's probably going to have to be fine. Right, so let's try to come up this way. There we go. You're still running, coming very low. Just, just how low can you be? 60 feet. That's not a lot. That's 20 meters above the sea level. Um, these are multi-role aircraft. I think we can be relatively sure that they are potentially hostile. Um, all of these other ones might as well be passenger lines. So we need to be inherently very, very careful about that. These guys here, well, I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, there's there's always going to be some 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 of the strategy you just can't. It's it's very difficult to 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 wrap your head around that. Um, but it's not unique, you know. There was um, an American aircraft that uh, sorry, an American cruiser, I believe, or destroyer, and that actually downed an Iranian aircraft a uh, long time ago uh, when it came from Bandar bus flying to du to Dubai, and they did mistake it for a bomber. So. Items like these is, I think, what the game is very weak in handling. It just doesn't feel like it's always doing a good job at um, at putting down the ambiguity of contacts. I mean, we know that these guys here are F-15 Eagles. Why do we know that? We don't have anything close here. Uh, our closest aircraft is this is this one over here. Where we might see if it's if it does have active radar emissions. I no, it does not. So I don't know how we can be sure that this is an F-15. Right. With these cars, I'm a little bit more confident with all of these radar signatures that we are seeing over there. I think it does make sense that we have a reasonable guess of identifying who they are. So they are running around 20 knots and they haven't fired at us yet, even though that we are definitely within range. Of course, that could be because we are coming in very low and they don't have carrier. Um, they don't have any form of combat air patrol, so they might not have spotted us. Um, but honestly, I don't quite believe that. I don't. I don't think that's the case at all. Right, you guys are also doing fine. I guess we could bring you up a little bit closer towards over here, so that you are in range to engage once the order comes. And that would indeed be lovely. And you know what? On you guys, I think in the doctrine, I want you to not return to base 
when the last aircraft has fired. Because otherwise you'd be shooting off your missiles and then you'd be trying to run home immediately and I think that would just invite um, retribution. We would want to use some of the terrain here to mask our approach back to uh, back to our base basically and come in very low, run sort of this way. I think that would make sense. Um, is there any, any altitude limitation here? No, actually there isn't, of course. So you know what, actually I think what we want to do here is run you a little lower at least. So that we have few, less time to come down there. I think that does make sense. You're doing fine, you're doing fine. You're on hold, that's okay. You guys are coming down there, that's good to see. Mainstay number one is coming up this way, that's good to see as well. And yeah, that's fairly fantastic. So, ooh, pause. You guys are actually already very close. So, we've got four bombers coming in. You're too high, you're too low. You need to come to low altitude. You need to come up this way. And then next time, because I'm gonna put in a cut here, we are gonna see, we are gonna kick off um, and, and start the Hornet's Nest. So, um, the US Navy ship, it's hard to say. It's a Nimitz class carrier, I know that much. So the, does it, do we know what it is? It's the Carl Vinson is gonna come under attack over here. Uh, we've also got two missile crew, so there is a cruise, a missile cruiser, guided missile cruiser, over there. There's a guided missile cruiser over here. We've got a destroyer over there and another destroyer over here. All of these guys are extremely potent weapon systems. Um, right now, I don't think they know that we are coming in with very hostile attention. So, um, yeah, we're going to try to use that. We're going to come up to a much higher altitude. And then we're going to use three, four bombs. I think this is a suicide mission. I fully expect none of these guys here to return. Um, yeah, but you know what? That's going to have to wait until next time. So do leave a like on all of that and let me know what you think about continuing this. Um, is it the right call? I do think so. Let's try to find out just how this would play out um, in between Iran and the US. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.